Life Permaculture coming to you from Lipaluna Lichuita in Hobart, Tasmania. Today I'm going to show you around my worm farm and why we love it so much. Um, I'm actually sitting on it right now so I have it as a seat so I can sit here and admire my garden, see other jobs I have to do but also so I can sit here and chat with my chickens talking <laughs> and our beautiful goats are next to them as well. So it's a multifunctional worm farm. Let me show you around. So the first thing you'll notice when we open up is all this old brown cardboard, which is actually playing a really important role. It's what we call a worm blanket. And you can buy worm blankets from your nursery or you can just use old brown cardboard boxes, which I'm doing, or a woolen blanket or hessian sack. And they're doing an important job of um, moderating the temperature, um, keeping moisture in, and also preventing from flies from cruising around and having a great time with all those food scraps. So very important. But if I peel the um, cardboard layers back, you'll see lots of juicy half composted uh, food scraps and all these little whoa come closer <laughs> check this out all these um worms whoa it's pretty gross but it doesn't smell yuck that's a really important thing so um these worms are not your common earthworm that you might see cruising around your lawnscape they're what we call compost worms and compost worms love nitrogen which is what food waste is and, and any animal manures any green fresh grass clippings it's all nitrogen and they just go sick for it so a worm farm is mostly full of nitrogen materials with some elements of carbon and carbon says dry dead stuff which could be brown leaves um, straw off shredded office paper no glossy magazines though here we've got some old um, broken brown paper bags got some tissues in there and that's like and occasionally I might dump a bit of straw in there if there's too much food waste um, but mostly it will be nitrogen so that's a really important thing if your worm farm is a bit smelly or, or you're just a bit worried about having too much food waste in there you can just sprinkle in a bit of carbon uh, and that will help balance it out like so and so I've put I've, mine's borderline it's totally fine at the moment but I've just put a little bit in just as a preventative measure <laughs> Other things you can do if it is really smelly, like whoa, that is not a good scene. You can sprinkle a bit of dolomite lime on there. So just a, a nice little sprinkle and that will help bring the pH back into balance. Now, as you may have noticed, our worm farm is actually an old bath, so it's quite large. Uh, baths are great to use because they come with, with inbuilt drainage. We use a plug hole and we have a false floor uh, underneath everything. So liquid can drain freely, which we catch. I'll tell you about that later on. But you can see because it's so big, you, we can split it in half and we treat the two sides differently. So over here is the active side that we just had a look at. And over here is more of a passive side, which is uh, resting and maturing. Um, so the worms have been in here, they've been doing their thing. They've moved themselves over to where I started putting the fresh food. And this over here is just slowly breaking down. Uh, so come close and I'll show you some things that are working and that are not working. <laughs> There's still quite a lot of chunky stuff in here. The, most of it I'm not worried about because we actually, we'll sieve this out when we, when we harvest the worm casting, which, castings, which it looks like brown soil, the, the worm's poo. I sieve it out, but the thing that annoys me a little bit is the amount of big eggshells I can see in here because it's a missed opportunity. Um, eggshells are a great source of calcium if they're ground up. And so calcium's good for your garden, your plants. And so the more um, minerals we can put into the soil, into the compost in the soil, the better. And so to prevent eggshells is hanging out and not doing much, I grind them up before I put them in there. I'll show you how. In the kitchen, when I, every time I use some eggs, I'll just click the shells in a bowl next to the stove. And then when I've got a big bowl, I'll roast them for like around 10 minutes at 200 degrees. And so that, just doing that quickly means that when I pull them out, I can crush them really easily. And so they're really, really brittle. And I pop them in a bowl, get a bottle, and I grind them up. Okay, so you can see it's, it's mostly great. Um, the other equivalent to doing this is to use your uh, bean, coffee bean wither thing, which is really quick. This is, but the heat's better, so it's quite dusty. And it means I can sprinkle that in. And that calcium is much more available now to the worms and to the plants, which is a win-win-win, which is good. Now, a lot of people freak out with worm farms and go, oh, you can't put in citrus, onions, meat, bread. I'm like, well, what's left to put in then? <laughs> 
the short answer is you can put in anything into your worm farm with some things in moderation more than others so i've got my scrap bin here i'm just going to show you what's going to pop in today okay so straight away you can see quite a few um, onion skins in there oh and there's a few no-nos hey so we've got an onion uh, sorry a lemon and a mandarin i'm totally fine with those going in but don't do this which i'm going to blame on my six-year-old daughter <laughs> So you don't want to put in whole anything, like a whole pumpkin, a whole mandarin, a whole lemon, because it'll sit there for ages. Um, so you want to chop that up. So I'll chop that up after this little chat, I promise. <laughs> um, but other things you can see in here uh, is a brown paper bag, which is broken. So that can be a nice small addition to um, of carbon. And we've got some tissues in here. And oh, I can't see any, but we put all our... Oh, tea bag. Got a tea bag. Great. So some people are like, oh, don't put tea bags in there because um, some of them will have uh, some glues, some plastic glues in them. So, and some don't. So these ones don't. So just do your research. They can definitely go in. Coffee can go in. Um, all meat can go in in moderation. Obviously the bones won't break down in a cold composting system that this is, but meat scraps can go in. Any um, leftover cooked food like porridge or pasta can go in as well. The key thing is that you don't put too much food in. Uh, because that's when it becomes smelly and gross, it can attract part, um, uh, flies or rodents, and that becomes a problem. So if you have more food waste than you have space for, you can put it in, but you might put carbon in or a bit of lime, as I mentioned earlier, or you have a second facility, another worm farm as well, or another compost bin, so to split the load. Um, and in other things you'll see in here, I've got some banana peels. Usually I, I rip them up a little bit, but honestly, it doesn't matter. These ones are really flexible they break down really quickly <laughs> and so after I put my food scraps in there I'm gonna I'm gonna take these whole ones away have a chat to Frida my daughter about chopping them up first <laughs> um, but I pop them in and I just put my little bits of um, cardboard back on top my worm blanket and that's it so beneath our worm farm, underneath the plug hole, I've got a bucket that collects all the brown worm wee. Because remember, I've got a false floor on this bath, so nothing's getting clogged up. And we love the worm wee because it's incredibly fertile. So we harvest it, dilute it, and then put it back onto our annual and perennial food crops. Um, and the ratio that you, you're looking for, because when you're diluting, is 10 to 1, which is roughly the colour of weak tea, which is a nice visual indicator. So when I'm just doing a small watering can, I just get a little bucket and put a, a healthy gush into the watering can. And then I'll just fill that up with water. It's ready to go directly onto the crops. So now you've seen my worm farm, which I hope you love as much as I do. And if any of you out there have a food garden, really, you should have a, a compost worm farm as well because it's a beautiful relationship where um, A, they're processing your food scraps, but also B, they're providing incredible um, uh, fertility for your food crop. So it's a, it's a no-brainer, really. And look, if you need any more convincing, check out these amazing facts. Dun, 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 dun. <laughs> Compared to your original soil, uh, worm castings, the stuff that you get out of here that looks like soil, um, have approximately seven times the available phosphorus, six times the available nitrogen, three times the available magnesium, two times the available carbon, and 1.5 times available calcium. This is amazing. This is actually incredibly amazing. So all those minerals are already there in the soil, but they're more available to the plants, which mean that you will have uh, healthy soil, healthy plants equals healthy people. Get on it, people. Uh, enjoy your worms. <laughs>